Good morning. Today we'll talk about the normal menstrual cycle. The onset of menstrual cycle is part of the puberty change in a female. Uh, it usually it happens around 10 to 14 years of age. The menstrual cycle, as we know it, evolved to follow a lunar cycle, which is approximately 28 days. So as you all know, the menstrual cycle usually is 28 plus minus 7 days. So any menstrual cycle within a period of 21 to 35 days is considered to be within the normal limit. So when we say menstrual cycle, we can have uterine cycle and ovarian cycle. And the uh, ovarian cycle is broadly classified again into follicular phase, ovulation phase, and luteal phase. So for the menstrual cycle to start, uh, there has to be an intact hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. We need uh, responsive follicles in the ovaries. We need a functional uterus. And if any of this is absent, sometimes uh, we do find that uh, there's abnormality in the development of the uterus, that the person is born without uterus. In such cases, there will not be an onset of menstrual cycle. So uh, menstrual cycle is uh, controlled by hormone. The first uh, signal comes from the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus will secrete gonadotropin releasing hormone in a pulsatile manner, which will further stimulate uh, anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH or follicle stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone. So this FSH and LH will act on the ovaries and there will be negative feedback to the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus and so on. We'll further learn it in the next few slides. So like we said, since the menstrual cycle is controlled by the higher center, sometimes uh, stress, anxiety can have an effect on the menstrual cycle uh, because uh, all these are controlled by the higher center. Let us see the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis. Here, uh, the hypothalamus in the brain is the highest center here. A hypothalamus will secrete gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will stimulate anterior pituitary to, to secrete luteinizing hormone and FSH. Luteinizing hormone and FSH will stimulate the ovaries to secrete estrogen and progesterone. When there is enough level of estrogen and progesterone, in the circulation, they will have a negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus so as to limit the further secretion of LH and FSH. Okay, let us see what does FSH and LH do. FSH, like I said, is secreted from the anterior pituitary. It is a glycoprotein. It stimulates the ovary to secrete estrogen from the granulosa cells. Whereas luteinizing hormone, which is also another glycoprotein secreted from anterior pituitary, it causes the secretion of estrogen. It is responsible for ovulation. It is responsible for secretion of progesterone from the corpus luteum once ovulation happens. There is a negative feedback of estrogen and progesterone on the uh, anterior pituitary and hypothalamus like we said before. Uh, let us have a look at the ovarian cycle. Here, ovarian cycle is uh, further divided into follicular phase, luteal phase, ovulation phase. Um, as we all know, uh, when a baby girl is born, in the ovary there are around uh, even up to 2 million primary oocytes. But uh, the oocytes continue to undergo atresia. So by the time the girl has attained puberty, so there are around uh, 4 lakh uh, primary oocytes available in her ovary. So out of this, during her um, reproductive life, she would have ovulated approximately uh, 400 to 500 times. So what happens in the 
follicular phase. During the day one to day eight, uh, the level of FSH and AIDS are relatively high. This is due to the low level of the estrogen and progesterone from the previous cycle, which results in the uh, positive feedback to anterior pituitary, and that leads to the stimulation of FSH and LH. So this high level of FSH and LH will uh, stimulate the ovary and recruit around 10 to 20 primary follicles uh, in for that particular menstrual cycle. So uh, one menstrual cycle results in full maturation of a single dominant follicle. The dominant follicle uh, begins to be apparent by mid follicular phase, while the remainder undergo atresia. So uh, as the follicles continue to mature, estrogen levels start to rise. So from day nine to 14 days of menstrual cycle, the follicle will continue to grow in size. Then the there's a fluid that appears within the granulosa cells, uh, which is called antrum. So once there's a huge amount of fluid inside the uh, follicles, it is now called Graphian follicle, the oocyte will be pushed to one side uh, and it will be surrounded by uh, layers of granulosa cells known as cumulus oophorus. There is a continuing in rise of estrogen uh, because it is being secreted by granulosa cells uh, associated with follicular maturation. Then there is another hormone secreted by granulosa cells called inhibin. Inhibin, the role of inhibin is to uh, inhibit um, maturation of uh, multiple follicles. Let us see what happens in the ovulation phase of the ovarian cycle. On the day 14, approximately, there is a rapid enlargement of follicle and rupture of the follicular wall with the extrusion of the oocyte along with the cumulus ovaries. During this ovulation, some women may experience uh, abdominal cramps, um, which is called with cycle pain or metal smudge. There's a con what happens, what are the uh, hormonal changes that happens be just before ovulation, let us see. Uh, the estrogen, as we know, continue to rise due to the stimulant with the secretion from the granulosa cells. So when uh, there's a particular level of estrogen, which is high enough to cause the LH, uh, to stimulate the surge of the LH, which is called mid-cycle surge of LH. And to a lesser extent, the, this rise in estrogen also will stimulate the FSH increase. So the, this mid-cycle LH surge is the necessity for ovulation to occur. Ovulation usually follows within 24 to 48 hours of mid-cycle surge of LH. If we do not have LH surge, there will not be ovulation. So our cycle will be Anovulatory. So the next phase of the ovarian cycle is luteal phase. Once the ovulation has happened, and the ovarian cycle becomes the luteal phase, which is usually day 15 to 28 days of the menstrual cycle. So once the oocyte has uh, ovulated, the remainder of the follicle retaining the ovary, which becomes vascularized and become yellowish in color, and uh, penetrated by capillaries and fibroblasts from the thicker cells. Uh, it, this is known as corpus luteum. Um, this is the major source of uh, estrogen and progesterone during the post ovulatory phase. Uh, and this will lead to the marked increase in progesterone and estrogen. If uh, conception and implantation occur, corpus luteum does not regress uh, for period of uh, approximately eight to nine weeks of pregnancy. Uh, here, during this time, it is the major source of progesterone, which is necessary for the maintenance of uh, early pregnancy. And uh, the corpus luteum is, plays an important role here because it maintains the pregnancy till the uh, pregnancy can be supported by the developing placenta. So, but if the conception does not occur, the corpus luteum will regress and the level of the estrogen and progesterone will fall, which will result in the next menstrual cycle.
Let's have a look here in the ovarian cycle of the menstrual cycle. See, we can see that at the left hand side, there's a primary follicles. Uh, then as the follicle is growing, there is a fluid filled space inside, it is called antra. And furthermore, at the mature follicles, we can see that the oocyte is pushed to one side, uh, surrounded by cumulus ovaris, which is a uh, two three layers of granular cells. Then uh, when the, there is um, ovulation, secondary oocyte comes out along with the cumulus ovaris, and the yellowish pigment which remains in the ovary is corpus luteum. And if there is no fertilization, it becomes whitish and becomes corpus albicum. This is a diagrammatic representation of the ovarian cycle, the changes in the uterus, and the various hormones responsible, that, responsible for the changes. So we will see the uterine cycle of the menstrual cycle, along with the changes in the hormonal levels uh, in the blood, and the changes in the ovary, there's a change in the endometrium of the uterus. So this, uh, influenced by the cyclical production of the steroid hormones. The changes happens in the endometrium as well as in the cervical mucus. So endometrium as such is two-layered, superficial layers that sheds during the menstrual cycle, and the basal layer that does not take part but regenerates the superficial layer. The basal layer has straight arterioles, whereas the superficial layers has spiral ones, important in the process of shedding. The uterine cycle has been divided into proliferative phase and secretory phase. Uh, here, the proliferative phase uh, occurs before the ovulation, uh, that is during the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle. The endometrium, which is exposed to estrogen secreted from the granulosa cells, uh, they, this will result in the regeneration of uh, the endometrium from the last menstrual cycle. Uh, during the menstrual cycle, you should know that the superficial layer of the endometrium is shed, so the re regeneration happens from the basal, basal layer. So the glands in the endometrium are, at this time are straight and parallel to one another and contain very little secrets. So once ovulation has happened, the endometrium, the changes that happens in the endometrium is called secretory phase. So the progesterone, which is secreted from the um, corpus luteum, causes secretory changes in the endometrial glands. So uh, there will be an appearance of secretory vacuoles in glandular epithelium below nuclei, and there is a secretion in the lumen of glands, which become tortuous and develop serrated. The luteal phase of menstrual cycle usually lasts 14 days. So this is uh, relatively fixed. If the cycle is prolonged or shortened, it is usually due to the changes in the follicular phase. Okay, so with the regression of corpus luteum, the secretion of estrogen and progesterone will decline. And due to the low level of progesterone estrogen, there is intense spasmodic contraction of spiral section of endometrial arterioles, which will result in ischemic necrosis and then for the shedding of the superficial layer of the endometrium, which results in bleeding. These spasms are associated with prostaglandin, which are also associated with this uterine contraction during menstrual flow and associated with the dysmenorrhea. So there are other changes uh, during menstrual cycle. So body temperature, there will be a rise of 0.5 degrees Celsius after ovulation till onset of menstruation. This is due to high progesterone level. If conception occurs, this temperature is maintained to our pregnancy. So in early pregnancy, some women feel feverish. So there's a breast changes. Uh, during the luteal phase, there's a tenderness and swelling of breast due to increased progesterone level. And psychological changes like change in mood and an increase in emotional liability which may be uh, due to the falling of progesterone level. There is a change in the cervical mucus. Uh, depending on the days of the menstrual cycle. So here, uh, cervical mucus, what is the importance? Uh, you know, it's 
important to stop ascending infection. But during menstrual cycle in the early follicular phase, it is thick and impermeable. But in late follicular phase, due to the increasing level of estrogen, the mucus becomes watery and easily penetrated. Uh, this will allow the spermatozoa to get through. And then it can stretch like uh, up to even up to 8 or 10 centimeters. This change is known as spin bucket. Uh, this uh, change is known as spin bucket. And post ovulation, once ovulation has happened, the progesterone from purpose duty and from Complex this estrogen effects, um, the mucus becomes impermeable and the cervical also contracts. So the average men's blood loss during menstrual cycle is 35 to 80 ml. Uh, bleeding more than 80 ml is considered as heavy menstrual bleed. On an average, usually the bleeding days is three to five days. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. If you have any queries, you can ask me through.